and your fan relay goes click, high speed. We're all okay with that. Gee. So far, we're all okay. Okay. So what turns on the low speed? The same relay. It doesn't do anything. It's normally closed going to low speed. So when you get the, the, the fire coming on, okay, nothing happens with the, with the um, relay. fan relay, right? It just automatically goes right on past it, right? Goes right on through, okay? What's the next stop for the electricity to turn on the low speed fan? All depends. If it's a, uh, that one with the wheel and the, and the, the temperature probe, uh, it turns when it gets hot, it turns and you click. It turns on low speed fan, right? Let's say you've got a time delay. The time delay, it's it's a little it's a little thing, and it's got two wires on it that, that heat up a little bimetal in there. It goes one minute later, and the heat exchanger is nice and warm. Quick, low speed fan. On a circuit board, same thing. Time delay, but you don't have to do any wiring. It's all wired for you. So when the fat, when the uh, Flame comes on, a little timer inside the uh, circuit board, click, low speed fan one minute later. Okay. So um, it seems like this is uh, kind of a problem for some people, but you just have to, to, there's only three ways to turn the damn thing on. No, no, there's only two ways to turn the damn thing on low speed. One is by temperature. Heat exchanger is hot, turns on the fan. No little wheel. Time. The other one, time. Now it might be that you have to wire it up yourself on that cam stack, or it'll be on the circuit board, it's wired up for you. All you have to do is wire the damn thing up and it works. Now a lot of you guys are gonna be wiring up your um, uh, circuit board, right? You've done the rest and you're gonna I don't have a lot of circuit boards. I think I only have three. So you may have to you may have to share that. Now, once you're done with all the projects that are here, including that low temp one back there, who was wearing the low temp up last week? No? Was it you? Who wired that low temp up last week? I guess it was uh, my partner. It was the guy right here. Oh yeah. He left. I, I was gonna check it out for him and I couldn't find them. I'll finish it. Well, it was not working. Everything was working, uh -huh. except the fan was not on. Okay. Gross. And it was icing up all the way to the compressor. Yeah. Nice. Everything worked, except the fan was not on. So whoever, I forgot who it was. I, I was busy with a bunch of stuff, so I didn't get to him in time. I guess it left. I got the time to wait for him. But the fan never did come. Out. So whoever now if he's not here today, we'll take off the. Um, were you here last week? No, uh, no, you weren't. You weren't. Um, do you need something? What? Todd is in the next room. Yeah, just knock on the door. Huh? <laughs> he always does that. Whenever you ask him, huh? I'm not answering anymore. I only say it one time. Okay, so that's what we're going to be going over right now. Okay, heating cycle. On this particular one, they have a little switch that clicks it, clicks it closed. Let's take a look. When heating is required, the thermostat is set to the desired temperature. The fan switch will usually be on auto during the heating mode of operation. Okay. If you, on most systems, not all systems, 
But on most systems, if you have it on auto, then that means that the, um, that the fan relay is closed. And when, you, when the electricity is all the way going through it all the time, and it's just waiting for the either time delay or the temperature. Okay? Well, we're okay with that, right? Yes. Okay, good. Uh, now, let's say you walk up to your thermostat and it's on heating and it's on auto and it's going low speed. If you go over and you put it on on, okay, that energizes G. G is high speed. So if you've got it on, on auto and it's on heating and it's on low speed and you walk over and you go click and you put it on fan on, high speed, G. See? See? If, if you put that up on, up, up like that, like that, on on, it would go to G. And G goes straight to your high speed. Okay, do you get more hot air out no. of it if you put it on high speed? No. no. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Is it good for your furnace? No. no. And I'll tell you why. Okay? It's a little off of what we're doing right now, but I'll tell you anyway. Just don't tell anybody else, okay? <laughs> <laughs> okay. If you turn it on high speed, you take too much heat out of the heat exchanger. Okay. If you take too much heat out of the heat exchanger, now you'd think, oh, get more heat out of the heat exchanger. That's good, right? It's not good. What happens is the products of combustion get too cold. And you know how hot air rises? Okay. Well, it'll get too cold and it won't rise all the way out the roof. Uh. So you'll get some backing up. And if you don't get all of it rising out the roof, okay, one of the products of combustion is water vapor. What happens is the water vapor, water, you know, steam, mm -hmm. it turns into water on the tube. And it'll start dripping back. Mm -hmm. When it drips back, it drips on the heat exchanger, it will rust the heat exchanger out. Mm. So, uh, you know, you think, oh, you know, I'm going to get more, more heat out of it. Mm -mm. That's why whenever you install a furnace, you should do a heat rise test. You look in the furnace, the fur it says, um, it says uh, 50, to 60 degrees heat rise. Okay? I'll write that it, it, it might say 40 to 50. It all depends on the furnace. But let's just say it says 50 to 60 heat rise. Let's say it says 50 to 60 degrees heat rise. Okay? What you do is you turn on the furnace. And this is when you go to, you know, when you install the furnace, you turn on the furnace. You wait for it to work for a little while and the fan to go on and everything. And then you take a uh, uh, return. Go over to the, you go in the hallway, and you put your little thermometer down there, and you see, what's the temperature of my return? The temperature going into the furnace, by the filter. If the filter's in the, in the hallway, let's go in the hallway, okay? Return temperature. Let's say the return temperature is... Feeling return. Um, 60. Let's say the return temperature is 60 degrees. Then you go to the closest 
supply register. Mm -hmm. You go to the closest vent, mm -hmm. the closest supply. It's usually like the bedroom right next to the hallway, you know, like mm -hmm. here's the here's the closet, you know, here's the return, you know, right next door is a bedroom. There. Or maybe right next door is a bathroom. There. You go there and you take the closest supply. And let's say that, let's say it's a hundred and, uh, well, let's make this. Let's make this perfect. Let's make this uh, 55. So let's say it's uh, 55, that would be 100 and 10. supply and that's 115 so you take your thermometer and you put it up there and you read it it's 115 right so that means the difference is 55 degrees heat rise rise Yeah. Right in the middle, no problem. Look in the furnace. There's a little tag inside the furnace. And the little tag inside the furnace will tell you that. Heat rise, um, 55 to 60, 45 to 50, and whatever. But it say right in the furnace. Okay, now, if you, if you don't have the right thing, okay, let's say you don't have the right thing. Let's say you have, uh, let's say your heat rise is, um, 40. Let's say your heat rise is 40, okay? Your heat, heat rise is 40. Okay, if your heat rise is 40, that means it's it's kind of cold. Heat rises 40, right? Okay. Let's see. The heat rises 40 degrees. Okay. That means that your um, that means that your your fan is going too fast. Mm -hmm. You want you want the air to go slow over the heat exchanger. When the air goes slow over the heat exchanger, it makes the air hotter. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you want it to go slow over the heat exchanger to make it hotter. So if your heat rise was 40, would you want it to go slower? To make it hotter? Yeah. Absolutely. So that means that two fast. If it was like 40, that means it's too fast. So what you'd want to do is you'd want to go, if you had one of those things that's, that goes one, two, three, four, mm -hmm. and yes. it was on number three, okay, you want it to go slower, you put it on number four. Remember, it's like a horse race. Mm -hmm. Number one, the fastest. Yeah. Okay. So you put it on to make it slower. If you had one of those circuit boards, you'd simply unhook it where it says uh, medium, and you put it on slow. Okay. Medium, slow, fast, are they all 
Yeah, there are usually four speeds on one of these fan, on, on these blowers. There's um, high, medium high, medium low, low. Okay. So if it was on medium low, you put on low. If it was on medium high, you put it on medium low. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Let's say you. Uh, Let's say you did your heat rise test, and it was uh, 70 degrees of heat rise. If it was 70 degrees of heat rise, that means that the air is going so slow over the uh, heat exchanger that it can, it's just, it's too hot, right? You want it to go a little faster, right? So that means you'd want to, you want to speed it up a little bit. So, I'm sorry, uh, slow it down. Um, speed, speed it up. up. Yeah. So this would equal to slow. No, another one. I hate that. Mm -hmm. Need another O there. <laughs> huh? Need another O. Two. Here? Yeah. Two. That's true. You're right. <laughs> I've been doing that forever. <laughs> I've been doing it wrong Me too. Me too. Okay, there's two words I get mixed up in the English language. <laughs> two? Uh huh. You know, there's T O. Yeah. T O O. Yeah. T W O. Yeah. <laughs> there's another word I get mixed up. There. T H E R E. T H I E R? Yeah, yeah. It, it was a, yeah. And there's another one that I forgot what it was. There. there. I only use one, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't care. Everything is T H E R E. <laughs> I don't care. If it's over there, or, the or place. It's, it's, the place. It's, it's their friends. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> it, it, it's their friends? T H E R E. Okay. I know. People that are from a, a English is their second language. Yeah. They know English better than native-born Americans. Yep. Yep. Native-born Americans never learn English. Yeah. People that learn it as a second language, yeah. they, they learn, properly. learn it right. Properly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, Johnny can't read. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, does this make sense? Yeah. Yes. I'll, yes. I'll do it one more time. Oh my gosh. For the benefit of Raphael. <laughs> he loves it, Raphael. Okay. He's good. You do a return. He's come back next semester. You do a temperature rise test. Yeah. Okay? Why do you want to do a temperature rise test? Mm. Make sure combustion is done correctly. We don't want the products of combustion. Mm -hmm. Rip back into mm. the heat exchanger, right? Mm. Yeah. Okay. That's the bad part about getting the uh, fan too fast. What's the bad part of you not getting the fan too slow? What happens if your heat exchanger gets too hot? It burns fast. It burns it out, huh? It cracks. Number one, you might crack it. Yeah. Number two, you might have a problem with that little thing that turns everything off if the heat exchanger gets too hot. Okay. What's that called? Uh, not a roll out. It's a... Um, Infusible link? It starts with an L. Limit switch. A limit switch. switch. Yeah. Limit switch. Right. Okay. Okay. It's the limit switch. Okay. The limit switch, your customer will call. Yeah. I don't know what's wrong with this thing. I hear it go on. The fan comes on, and before I, it's, 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 it just turns off. Yeah. And then 15 minutes later, it comes on, the fan comes on, and then it turns itself off again. Okay? Very typical service call. Okay, the problem is your heat exchanger is getting too hot, your limit switch is clicking everything off. 
and you have to find out why the heat exchanger is getting too hot. It's always the same thing. Not enough airflow. Not enough, not enough airflow. What causes, what causes not enough airflow? Restriction. Well, it could be this. It was never set right. Mm -hmm. Oh, a dirty filter. Oh, big. Mm -hmm. Big problem, mm -hmm. dirty filter, not enough air, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, I found this to be true. A lot of people, they have a big house and their family goes away. They still got the big house, right? What do they do with all the bedrooms? Close, close them off. Vents. They close every bedroom off. Yeah. I'm not wasting all my heat on this stupid house. Right. I'm going to close all the things off. Okay, so now they've got their bedroom and they've got their TV room. And that's it. Mm -hmm. They got the bedroom, they got the TV room. Mm -hmm. You got two holes this big trying to get all the air out. Mm -hmm. It won't go out. Mm -hmm. You can only get so much air out of two holes that big, right? right. Yeah. Okay. You're going to get a call. I hear it go on. I hear the fan come on. <laughs> Everything turns off. Mm -hmm. you know? So it's a regular call that you're going to get. So what you do is clean the filter. Open all vents, heat rise, mm -hmm. test, mm -hmm. do a heat rise test. It sounds harder than it is, just look at the little thing, mm -hmm. write down the number, you know, 50 to 60 or 45 to 60 or whatever, temperature going in, temperature coming out, adjust, adjust the fan. And that's just a matter of just doing something on the circuit board, you know, or doing, you know, something like that. And then on the circuit board, the, the, the third thing you want to do is when, the, when, you know, turn off the heat. When you turn off the heat, the flame goes out, right? Put your hand up there. Just wait. Wait. And when it just starts to get cool, click. Mm -hmm. It turns off. If it's still hot and it turns off, you need to make the fan go a little a little longer. And you do that right on the circuit board. Um, let's say it turns off to, uh, uh, you know, it, it blowing, blowing, cold, 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 cold. Customer says, oh, it blows cold on me every time. Okay. You need to make the fan turn off a little bit sooner. Okay. On, on, the, on the circuit board, it's easy. It's got a little thing that says 60, 90, 120. Mm -hmm. You know, you just make it fat, uh, longer or shorter. Mm -hmm. Was it seconds? Seconds. Seconds. 90 seconds. About a minute, a minute and a half is about right. Mm -hmm. When you guys uh, do your... Uh, um, Whiteboard? Okay. Time it out for me. Mm -hmm. You know how, how you do the whiteboard? Yeah. And, 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 and you hook up the timer? Yeah, timer. Turn on your gas valve. Time it out. Mm -hmm. And then after it's all going, turn off your gas valve. Time it out. Mm -hmm. See what it is. It's going to probably be a minute, mm -hmm. minute and a half. It's about right. It's about right. If it's got one of those Fan limit switches, okay? You know where they've got the probe and the mm -hmm. probe gets hot and makes mm -hmm. that, that wheel turn? Yeah. yeah. Okay? How do you make it go longer or shorter on that? You just do, do the degrees. You know? Now, I set it, I usually set mine. When I go there and I put it in a furnace and it's got one of those, I set it at Ninety degrees off, one hundred and ten degrees on. Hmm. That's on the fan limit switch. Okay. On that little wheel, yeah. you'll set it for ninety degrees off, hundred and ten degrees on. In other words, the flame comes on, 
when the heat exchanger gets to 110 degrees, the fan comes on. After, after it's all satisfied and the flame goes off, when the heat exchanger gets to 90 degrees, it turns the fan off. Okay. And the reason I put it backwards, did you notice I put it backwards? Yeah. I put it backwards because the first one is 90, that's off. Second one is 110. That's all. It's backwards on the uh, on, on the wheel. Mm. So that's why I put it backwards like that. Okay. I didn't really plan on talking about how to adjust your heat rise or yeah. your fan uh, on and off mm -hmm. time. And, or temperature, yeah. but I think it's worth it because yeah. yeah. it's something. It's a regular service, service call, call in the winter. Yeah, it's a regular service call you're going to get. Yeah. You know, cycling on limit mm. or um, blowing cold on the customer. You know, after the cycle, uh, very very typical. I saw a hand. Was it Arson? No, I mean, but was it you? It's okay. Because uh, you said you said this already, and you said the uh, okay. Because I forgot how to do that. That um, how to check the the, the heat the rise. The, no, the tonnage of the system. But then I asked you how to check the tonnage of the system in heating or cooling. Cooling. In cooling. Okay. Uh, let's do this first, and then I'll go over that briefly. Because I, I did it once. Yes. Yeah, yeah, but. Okay, I'm just like you guys. I go to seminars. Mm -hmm. And when they're talking at the seminar, I'm going, oh yeah, I understand. Mm -hmm. And the next day, I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I, uh, so I know how it is. I know how it is. I, you know, same thing happens to me. They say it takes seven times before you get it. You guys are smarter than the average. You guys are probably four or five times it takes, you know? But that's okay. I, I tell the other teachers, the other teachers go, you know, I don't want to teach the same thing you're teaching. You know, I want to go ahead and do something new because they've already heard it from you. I go, uh-uh, just because they heard it doesn't mean they get it. You know? <laughs> teach it to them again. Right. That's why I go over electrical. Tyler goes over electrical. Uh, Lobo goes over electrical. I have everybody going over the electrical because it's so important. Yeah. I'm running this whole class on electrical. Right. I'm not even talking about re refrigeration. Yeah. Oh, here's the high side, here's the low side, this is that, that, no. You know, it's all electrical. And most people, who was it? Uh, you were telling me. You ran into a stationary engineer that was um, at a hotel. Right. And he was more on the mechanical side of it. He knew about the mechanics, he knew about the pressures, he knew how to charge Freon, but he was weak on electrical. Biggest problem with people in this industry. If you've got the electrical, man, you're way ahead of everybody. Because, you know, when you look into a panel, and they see all the, you know, black relay and a brown relay, and they, they see all the wires going all over, you know, like when you guys are all done with your little projects. Mm -hmm. Step back and look at it. Yeah, it's spaghetti. It's a mess. Spaghetti, yeah. spaghetti coming out. <laughs> it's a spaghetti factory. <laughs> what? Yeah, you look at it, you go, wow, you know? But if I go, what's that wire do? Damn, you know. Yeah. Right? So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to take the fear out of electrical troubleshooting for you guys. Mm -hmm. And I think it's working. Yeah. You guys are a lot better. Like three weeks ago, and right now, yeah. in three weeks, I think you guys have improved a lot. You know? Yes? Also, does the heat anticipator on the thermostat play a role whether or not the cold air comes over? Yeah. Okay. As well as there's one more thing that works with with this. <laughs> this right here. Time delay. Okay. This is temperature. 
but really it's time, right? I mean, the, 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 the flame goes off, and then the blower keeps blowing the heat exchanger for a little while, okay? Now, we do it with temperature right here, and on the circuit board, we do it with time. No big difference, it's, it's time, okay? Now, what the, the heat anticipator does, you have to adjust the heat anticipator because what you have to do is you have to turn off the gas a little early. When you turn off the gas a little bit early, then when the fan blows at extra time, it'll be right on the correct temperature. Now, if you don't adjust the heat anticipator right, the customer is going to say, this thing never works right. It's in the 200 too cold. And that's because you didn't adjust the heat anticipator. If you don't adjust the heat anticipator correctly, what's going to happen is it's going to get to 65 degrees. Okay? Turns off. When the fan keeps blowing, it's going to go up to like maybe 67 degrees. Customer doesn't want 67 degrees. It's too hot. They want 65. So the heat anticipator turns off the gas a little bit early. So after all the blowing is done, it is on the correct temperature. So if the heat anticipator is not adjusted correctly, either the customer is going to go, it's either too hot or too cold. I can never get this thing right. Or they're going to say, what else are they going to say? Oh, they're going to say, it runs for a little while, turns off. Runs for a little while, turns off. You know, it's not, it's, it's satisfying itself too fast, mm -hmm. which means the heat anticipator is not adjusted better. Right. It's satisfying itself too fast. So that's a, a, a lot of guys have trouble with furnaces because they're used to working on AC and working on air conditioning all the time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they're working out, working out, working out. Then they get their first furnace call. Yeah. God, it's been nine months since I've seen a furnace. <laughs> What the hell do I do? You know? Um, I keep in my truck, I keep a book. And this book I'm going to give you when you're in my class. When you were in my class, right? And I gave you the book that says how to troubleshoot spark emission systems. Yeah. It's a good book. Yeah. It tells you exactly how to troubleshoot a spark ignition module. Mm -hmm. So it's 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 really good. Um, yes. Yes. The heat anticipator is right inside the thermostat. Mm -hmm. Right inside the thermostat. And when you adjust it, you adjust it according to the amp draw of the um, system in heating. And all of them. I like to go over it a couple of times in my class. Okay, we're, we're about 10 seconds into this film. And we've killed an hour, so we've got to go through this film. Won't energize if the fan switch happened to be left in the continuous position. It also closes two sets of heating contactor contacts in the power circuit energize the heater and to run the indoor fan motor on low speed. The heater and the indoor fan motor operate. Okay, this particular one that we're looking at, that's an electrical heater. Electrical heaters have electrical heating contacts. Just like that one right there in the corner. For you guys that have done that one in the corner, it has electrical heating contacts. Looks like a contactor, but it turns on the electric heat. And at the same time, it turns on the low speed thing. That's what they're talking about right here. That is satisfied and opens. At that time, the heating contactor de-energizes and the two sets of heating contactor contacts in the power circuit open to 
deactivate the heater and to shut down the indoor fan motor. Okay, with, um, with electric heat and heat pumps, okay? With electric heat and heat pumps, no time delay for the heater. You call for heating, bam, you get the fan. Uh -huh. So I'll say it one more time. Electric heat, and there's a lot of condos that mm. have electric heat and heat pumps, okay? So you'll turn on the heater and bam, fan comes right on. Why? Is it, is it because the heat is instant in those yeah. situations? You don't have to wait for a heat exchanger. There's no heat exchanger. No. Bam, the yeah. coils are red, you got the fan, right? So, uh, okay.